This is an aircraft radio uh, for the civil aircraft band 108 to 135 MHz. It was made by Air Sciences and it is the RT551A. As you see this radio is... Uh, this is the radio, it is basically inside a, uh, a tray that makes it possible to use the radio for uh, for desktop operation as well as land mobile applications. It's very simple to uh, to operate. There is a volume control. There is a squelch. This is the uh, frequency dial, and this is for 25 or 50 kilohertz. So it basically uh, covers the air band in 25 kilohertz. In 25 kilohertz steps, uh, I have it hooked up to a, uh, a high impedance speaker right now, so this is basically high impedance output. However, it does have an output for a, uh, a regular 4 ohm uh, uh, speaker, but I have not uh, connected that right now. It runs off uh, 12 volts, 12 to 14 volts, and it gives off about uh, I think it's about 5 watts, which will. Uh, We'll look at it in a minute. Uh, like I said, very easy to operate, very simple. Uh, it's it's very narrow, but it is kind of a long tray. Uh, there is a, a mobile bracket with it as well. This is the uh, the tray identification. Very well built, U.S. designed, U.S. made, and it is uh, well known for its reliability. The RT. 551A. This is the uh, microphone that came with it. It's basically the well known Telex microphone. They gave it a different number here, the M551, but uh, Telex also gave this a uh, its own number. It's, it's basically a carbon simulating microphone, so it has some electronics in it to send a relatively high, high signal across these uh, cables to uh, minimize noise and, and hum and all that good stuff. There is a uh, mounting bracket that you can use to uh, mount, a, mount a microphone to a, uh, a wall. You basically then mount it, mount it like this. Very nice little transceiver. And like I said, it covers the complete civil airband. It's, it's very sensitive. I'll I'll let you uh, hear that. This is with the antenna connected, and this is the noise without the antenna. You see, it has good sensitivity. Very good sensitivity, actually. There is a backlight. I don't know if you can see it. That's always on, even when you turn off the radio. Now the radio is off, and the light is still on so that the pilot could find the, the radio in the dark even when it's turned off. Let's have a look at the back. The back of the tray, a, no, a normal SO239 UHF connector. This is the, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, microphone, the, the, the loudspeaker connector. And this is the uh, 12 volts. We can take the radio out of the tray, then you can see how that uh, compares against the tray itself. Okay, I kind of loosened the screw, you know, this screw here, and then you can pull it out. Like I said, it's kind of a funny shape. It is, uh, it's long and narrow. This is the front again. It is uh, basically a tunnel in which you slide it. This is the side. This one still has the uh, the uh, seal on the screws has never been opened. Here you see the uh, actual ID, ID plate. I don't know if that's readable. And the uh, connector. And this is the uh, RF connection. Neat little radio. 
like I said, these are very well known for their reliability. These things will last you forever. So you can either use it in a, in a plane, or you can use it as a desktop, maybe at a small airport. Perfect radio, covers the whole band. 35.975 is the highest. And then we go down. To 118, which is the COM band. The, uh, the area from 108 to 118 is the NAV band for navigation. This is the uh, COM band. Let's uh, put it back in the tray and listen a little bit more. All right, I've hooked up the uh, RT551A to uh, dummy load. So we took it off the antenna. And with the dummy load we can uh, test the transmit function without causing trouble, obviously. So I got this little uh, VSWR meter. And we got my ICOM airband uh, handheld as a uh, receiver to see how the radio is working. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, that works quite well. So good modulation. One, two, three, four, five. As you see, modulation works. So full scale should be about five watts, I would think. Uh, this handheld is one watt carrier. So if I connect that to the, uh, to the meter, we can do a relative uh, power uh, uh, comparison. All right, I now have the handset connected to the dummy load. Same frequency for the handset as well as the radio. Uh, as you can see, one, two, three. As you can see, the handset gets 10% of full scale compared to the uh, to the uh, RT551A which would mean that the radio is actually 10 watt carrier and not 5 like I said earlier. 10% of what we had with the uh, radio itself. So it's quite a lot of power for a little radio like this. Alright, we're back on the uh, Miami approach frequency again. Um, actually Miami has, has more than one approach frequency, but this is the one that takes the planes closest to me as they approach. So I got the stronger signal from that. I can't hear the tower. For that you have to be to live within about five miles. But these planes are at a much higher height, you know, as they land obviously. And uh, that makes it possible to hear them quite well. And that's basically it. The uh, Air Sciences Incorporated RT551A airband transceiver. This particular one is like new. I don't think I don't think it has been used much, and it's complete with tray and everything, so you can mount it either on your desk with a 12 volt power supply. You can uh, mount it in a vehicle, or you can mount it in a plane if you wanted to. Thank you for watching this.